communicated with first that we're going to go to him? All right, so we've got these clouds again that are starting to finally break up around San Antonio, which is great news here. You can see that we're seeing some clearing up on the north side, which is awesome. Also some breaks here on the east side along I-10 between Converse and Lavernia and in Elmendorf. We here at the station are right over San Antonio. This shot that you're seeing here on the right side of your screen is actually in Albuquerque where they've got clear skies. Can we bring up in this box the shot they've got at the SCOBY? Let's see if we can see that. Let's see if we can see that shot at the SCOBY real quick before we go to Mike. Oh, hey, okay, so that shot is just in <laughs> at SCOBY where there's a huge party. Um, let's Go ahead and that's the Albuquerque shot. Okay, let's go ahead and go out to Mike Osterhage who is out in Yavaldi while we wait for a second here. Mike, what do you got going on out there? Big event going on out in Yavaldi. Absolutely, and it was cloudy and rainy earlier. So let's see. If you know, and now uh, we have been seeing little bits of the eclipse every once in a while. Of course, you know, it's like taking your car to get it fixed. As soon as you take it in there, the clouds come, you know, the clouds have come back on in here. But yeah, a lot of folks have been seeing it. And, you know, it almost looks like that big smiley face as of right now. It was very dreary, as you mentioned earlier this morning when we were doing our live shots out here. We did have some showers around and yeah, we're obviously not seeing anything right now. But there are a few holes here and there, just to the uh, sort of to the, the southwest of where the sun is there up in the sky. We got a nice big hole, so hopefully that that hole in the clouds moves on in there. But uh, this is all just the start of the big party out here for the uh, the Stellar Fest, as they call it, the crossroads of the eclipse out here in U Valley. Ton of people out here, bounce houses, food, everything else. Um, yeah, the clouds. I guess Mother Nature didn't get the uh, didn't get the memo about clearing those clouds out here. But like I said, we have had a couple of breaks here and there, so uh, maybe that one little bright spot's going to slide over there. Nothing as of right now. Thank you so much, Mike. Yeah, so Mike's out in Yavaldi here where we are starting to see some clearing, which is again, good news. We're still about 40 minutes away from annularity when the moon will move in front of the sun and look like a ring on fire. What I wanna show you first though is San Antonio. Again, we're starting to get some clearing in downtown San Antonio. In fact, some of Adam's kids are here. If they head outside right now, they might be able to see that solar eclipse. But also nearer to downtown, and on the south side, we have our Justin Horn. He is at SAC, SCOBY Center, where they have got a huge party going on. Let's see if we can take Justin's feed. Um, so you can read all the science later. Hey guys, so we're over here at the SCOBY and we have a huge crowd here. That's what's incredible. So many people showed up and what's been uh, kind of interesting or frustrating, I guess, to the clouds. Uh, every time the sun pops out, we hear a big cheer and uh, the crowd gets very excited and then the clouds go back and everyone's kind of bummed. But I'm seeing more blue sky off to the west. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we're going to see more of this. And we've got to see glimpses of it so far, but there are, there is a huge crowd here, a lot of people watching. And we talked earlier to people from out of town. There's a lot of people visiting San Antonio. And uh, we've got presenters going on, people from NASA, just a lot going on here. There's free glasses, you can make cookies, the kids are excited. And I'm so uh, thrilled to see such a big crowd here. We did have a family we wanted to talk to here. Uh, you guys are here checking out the eclipse, so tell us, what do you think so far? I think it is so beautiful, we just put our glasses on and got to see our first glimpse of it, and it was so cool. What you, have you seen one before? No, sir. In fifth grade, we saw something close to it, but nothing like this. What do you think? I, I like it. I like science, and I like learning about the moon and sun. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys been waiting for this day for a while? Yes, sir. Yeah. Where, where are you from? Um, I go to Nisa High School, but we've been... Uh, I go to Woodridge Elementary. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, what do you think it's going to look like when we get to the... The, the, the main portion of annularity. Yeah. I'm so excited to see like the glimpse of sun behind the moon and you, you won't be able to see it anymore. Yeah. 
You got to get these clouds out of the way first. That's the frustrating thing. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy. So, yeah, a lot of people excited out here. We got a big crowd in. Hopefully, we'll get some more cheering. Hopefully, these clouds get out of the way and the timing will be perfect. Here's a, that's what we're hoping for, guys. Eastern part of San Antonio vacant next April 8th. Every single person should make their way over to the West so they get to experience totality. I have no idea. But. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Justin. And we've got Mia out in Floresville there. Uh, you can see that uh, we have got, again, uh, on your right-hand side, that feed coming out from Albuquerque because they've got clear skies. But let's check in with Mia out at the Peanut Festival. Mia, what's going on? Hey, Sarah, we are still having such a fun time. The parade's still going on, so we have a lot of folks that are still lined up on the parade route, but I was walking the parade route earlier, and everybody had their glasses. They were so excited, asking when the peak of the annular eclipse was going to start, so everybody is so prepared. And I'm going to ask Kenny, Kenny, you can already see some folks behind you, behind the parade. They're getting their glasses out. They are checking. We do have some passing clouds. Earlier this morning when we checked in with you guys on GMSA, we had almost full sunshine and it was very windy. The winds have calmed down, which is great, but we do have a few passing clouds, but the breaks are awesome. We are seeing breaks in the clouds. And when we do see those, as you can see right now, we've got people who are using their glasses safely to look up and see what's happening with the sun. I want to introduce you to Grayson. Grayson is almost 10. You turned 10 on what, Halloween? Halloween. Isn't that awesome? And Grayson is a space enthusiast. He came prepared with his glasses. And Grayson, you were telling me yesterday at school, you guys were doing some fun science experiments with the eclipse. Yeah, so there was one where we made like, there was rubber band attached to four uh, like ropes and we had a team and we tried to get the rubber band on top of a space shuttle and uh, um, you tried to get it onto the space station. You know? So y'all were doing some fun space-related kind of experiments for the eclipse. I had asked Grayson earlier if he had seen an eclipse. He said that he hadn't, but he knows the science behind the eclipse. You want to tell everybody what's happening today? Yeah. So, um, the, so basically an eclipse is when the moon goes in front of the sun uh, and um, blocks the sun. And an annular is where the moon is farther away from the um, Earth, and the ring of fire kind of creates an effect of that. See? He's got it down. I was so impressed. That was amazing. So we both have our glasses, right? There, we have a little bit of cloud cover right now, but we're going to safely, we're going to practice, especially when we get closer to the peak. Hopefully, we'll find a few breaks. So remember, we put them on before we look up. Go ahead. And then we look up. Got a little bit of cloud cover right now, but we do see a few breaks, which is great. Hopefully that will continue. And then whenever we're done, remember we look back down and then we safely take the glasses off. You've got it. So we're going to keep hanging out with everybody. We're starting to see some more folks trickle in here to the courthouse square. We've got the big peanut. We're having a great time and everybody is so excited for this annual eclipse. Thank you, Grayson. We'll check back in with you guys coming up in just a few. All right, thank you so much, Mia. I love that we have this opportunity to teach our kids about science during this super cool event. And you can see that we are starting to see some more breaks in the clouds. Again, if you're under the cloud cover right now, just a little bit of patience. Honestly, it's worth the reward, right? When all of a sudden you start to see that sun out there. So, okay, around San Antonio, seeing some breaks along I-10, seeing some breaks along 37 there. As we look a little bit further off to the west, it is still fairly cloudy out in Yavaldi and in Hondo, where um, Mike is out in Uvalde. And then across the hill country, right now near Kerrville, Bernie, that's where the most ideal viewing is for us. If you're out in Kerrville and Bernie, please send in your pictures to our KSAC Connect app. We would love to see what it looks like in your neighborhood right now. Uh, again, uh, things are starting to clear a little bit in San Antonio, but where Mia was out in Floresville, starting to get fairly cloudy there and in Pleasanton, as well as in Carn City, too. So as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast right around 1150, that's when we're going to see annularity. When the moon is going to move right in front of the sun and form that ring. Temperatures right now starting to get into the 70s, but they'll actually dip right back down into the 60s before we have a partly cloudy afternoon. I mentioned KSAT Connect earlier. 
Adam Kasky's in the house. <laughs> yes. He's got to look at some really awesome KSAC Cadet pictures. Tell me about it. They're now. starting to come in. And when we, when we say pictures, we don't mean you know necessarily pointing your camera at the sun to grab a photo, but even just reactions or like this, the pinhole projector. It says it works. Thank you. And that's a big thanks to Sarah because she was the one that did the uh, instructions on how to use it. If you're a welder and you have a welder's mask, you can look directly at the sun. And here's a picture of the sun through the welder's mask. And if you look closely, you see that little partial circle at the top. That's the moon starting to creep in, kind of like what you see on the right hand side of your screen. Paloma, the standard po poodle, <laughs> posing nicely with the glasses. And then, of course, down in Floresville, as we just saw, they're getting ready for it. They're starting to see breaks in the clouds. This is at the SCOBY from Justin Horn. Notice the breaks in the clouds. As Sarah and I were saying, we anticipate more of those breaks over the coming, uh, well, through the eclipse and as we approach the annularity. Waiting on the 2023 eclipse. Darn clouds are in the way right now, but the welder's mask there. That's a good way to view it. So that's what we have here on KSAT Connect. I want to go over some facts with you. Why is it called an annular eclipse or ring of fire eclipse? Because annulus is Latin for ring. So ring of fire, annulus, annular. That's how it gets that name. That's why we have those two names uh, that we've been calling it. 90% of the sun will be covered by the moon coming up starting at 11.52 a.m. here in San Antonio, lasting for four and a half minutes. But even with 90% of the sun covered, it's still not safe to look directly at the sun. Can I ever take my glasses off? Only if you're not actually looking up at the sun. You can go about your daily business as you normally would. You don't need eclipse glasses to drive down the road or walk down the street. They're just to look directly at the sun. Will it get dark outside? That's a question we've been getting with this eclipse. Answer, no. However, it will dim a little bit outside as if uh, clouds were passing in front of the sun. You know how you get those the shade from the, from the clouds periodically? That's more of what it'll look like. Adam, yes. Uh, I have got something so cool. It's a little nerdy on the satellite oh. image. Can oh. you guys yeah. bring yeah, 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 yeah. Show. Can you see it? Can you see the? Can you, you can see the shadow? You see the darkening of the visible satellite as we start to lose a little bit of the sunshine. So can you see that? Yeah. It's starting to darken as we're starting to see the moon move in front of the sun. So we use the visible satellite to see where the clouds are, but box. in order for it to work, we need to have some sunshine. So I'm going to step off here as I zoom into San Antonio. You can actually see a little bit better how um, the sky is darkening quite a bit there. Very, very cool to see that. And skies are still fairly cloudy along and south of Highway 90 and I-10. Um, so we're just like really pumped about the fact that we can see this on the satellite. I mean, again, this is like a once in a lifetime thing for us. The last time this happened was in 1940. And Adam, even though Adam is a little old, he wasn't alive back in 1940. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I am curious though, if they're starting to see any breaks in the clouds in Yavaldi. If you can ask Mike that before we go to him, that would be great. If not, we do have some special guests. We've got special studio. guests here. Yes, we do. Okay, now I'm gonna have to take my mic off a little bit. Tell me your name. I'm Sarah. Yes. I'm Callie. I'm Josie. Yes, my daughters and their friends. So tell me what you have right here. What do you have in your hands? Uh, this is the Eclipse box we actually made in science class and we're gonna use the box to look at the Eclipse. Have you tested it yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll find out pretty quickly. What are you most excited for, Callie? Uh, to see the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Josie, you've learned about this. Come here. Tell, tell, tell me what's happening out there today. I don't know. Okay, Josie's a little shy. That's all right. We're just doing this on the fly. I tell you what, you guys ready to go outside with me? Yeah. Let's go outside. Hopefully we'll have more breaks in the clouds. I think we'll start to see more. And let's at least get a glimpse of it with our own eyes and go outside. And that's the beauty of this stream. You can go outside and take in the scene while you have us streaming on the KSAT Weather Authority app or on KSAT.com. You can have us up on your phone and you can be outside while we do this. And we're going to go to Mike right now in Uvalde. Mike, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Adam and, and Sarah. You know, you're talking about the clouds out here. Yeah, I mean, you look over. We had 
just before you came to me the last time, we saw about a third of the sun that was covered, a big smotty face, what it looked like, and then the clouds moved back, and there were a couple of holes, but you know something, it just looking to the you know, to the east, to the southeast, where the sun is right now from our vantage point, uh, it is not looking promising. There is a little more clearing behind the camera further up to the north. So maybe folks north of Uvalde will be able to see a little bit there. Um, but yeah, it is just unfortunately not good eclipse viewing weather. You know, you're talking about some of the different little factoids. By the way, this is the uh, the stellar fest out here at Uvalde. And so they're going to be going just all day long. This is basically just the beginning of what's going on. You know, the other thing, if you're kind of wondering, when you look at the, the maps of how the eclipse travels from, say, right around Oregon down to San Antonio, it moves from the west. But when you think about it, the sun and the moon obviously rise in the east. Well, that's because of the rotation of the Earth. It spins from west to east. But in reality, the moon actually revolves around the Earth from west to east. So even though the Earth spins faster than the moon, so it appears like it rises in the east, it is actually traveling from west to east. That's why you see the progression of the eclipse from west to east. But we ain't seeing nothing as far as any progression of any eclipse around here right now. Obviously, the kids don't care. They are just having a blast around here. But, of course, folks are checking out the feed on the uh, KSAT app and the KSAT weather app. Plus, as I mentioned earlier this morning, a lot of folks are saying, you know, at least it's not as hot as what it was yesterday around here. So with, uh, you know, it's just pleasant, pleasant weather out here. So this is a great time. Good excuse to have a party, even though the guest of honor is not showing up here in Uvalde. Yeah, I wish I was up there in Kerrville right now or in Floresville with, with Mia or even there in town with y'all to see the, a little bit more of this. Yeah, I know, Mike. We wish you were here, too, but we're happy you're out there enjoying that fun event in Uvalde. And again, as we look at the satellite image around San Antonio, you're going to really have to hope for breaks around San Antonio into point south. There's quite a bit of clearing up to the north and to the east, uh, nearer to Leon Springs, Holotus, Bulverde along 281 there, just some high wispy cirrus clouds. And when we're looking at the satellite imagery toward the end of it, you can see that it's dimming. And the reason it's dimming is because of the picture you see here on the right hand side of your screen. We have got uh, the moon moving in front of the sun. This picture is from Albuquerque, but it's not too far off of how it actually Actually looks out there in San Antonio right now. We've got clearing skies out in Yaval in Lakey rather and Rock Springs and near Bandera. Over in Floresville, they're dealing with a very similar situation to us as far as the cloud cover. So what right now what we're gonna do is we're going to check in with meteorologist Mia Montgomery. She is out in Floresville at the Peanut Festival, Mia's hometown. Let's see how skies look out there with Mia. Have some cloud cover, especially where the sun is right now. But up to the north, we are starting to see more breaks in the clouds, so that's good. I have with me April and her amazing family. April, y'all are all Floresville natives, of course. Come generations come to the Peanut Festival, have booths in the Peanut Festival or vendors every year. How cool was it when y'all realized, oh my goodness, there's going to be this event that's happening during the peanut festival on Saturday. Y'all rushed to get your glass. Absolutely. We went on Amazon. We said we want everyone to experience it because I've never experienced one. And here we are and we've seen it a few times already. And oh my gosh, just amazed. It is so cool. I feel like I think maybe we should check it out. There's yep. You see some breaks in the cloud right there. Put you. Yep. And you can definitely start to see the moon moving in front of the sun. This is the coolest thing ever. And then here comes another passing cloud. So yes, we still do have good visibility and we are seeing some of that right now. I do want to come over here and talk to Miss Melissa and her niece, Barbara, and I actually, we were in theater together in high school. It's so good to see you guys. And Melissa, your father yes. here, y'all have had booths here with the peanut festival for decades, 55 years this year. Dad's been ha been a vendor here with the Peanut Festival and a longtime resident of Floresville. And uh, we all as a family chip in together and help them out every year. And I think the coolest thing, sir, is that y'all were saying you've basically grown up with the Peanut Festival. You just turned 79 and today is the 79th annual Peanut Festival. How cool is that? How's that? How, how awesome.
awesome is that? And you've, you've had your booth here. You were, I think it's just a big testimony to your roots here. And well, years, over 50 years we've been here. 50 years. Amazing. So are you all excited for the eclipse? Have your glasses. I know they've been right over here the whole time with their glasses. Check it out with every peak in the cloud cover that we have. I us all glasses. <laughs> Got everybody glasses. We are having a great time. Uh, so, yes, we are going to continue. We're having more people now trickle in all over with their glasses. They're sitting at the garden over there. The parade's starting to wrap up. And we are starting to see more peaks of sun, which is fantastic. Hopefully we continue to see that as well. So we'll check back in with you guys in just a little bit, but I believe now we're going to go back out to Justin to see things, how things are going over there. Hey, Justin. All right. Thanks, Mia. Uh, yeah, we're over here at Scobie. It's a full-on party, honestly, at this point. What just happened? Sun popped out. Huge, huge. We got a big cheer here. Everyone's excited because we're seeing this so clearly now, and there is a patch of blue sky right over us. Timing could not have worked out better. We'll see if this holds, but I'm feeling optimistic. And uh, yeah, everyone's excited right now. I want to walk you through the crowd. If you could, walk with me, Robert. And we got big crowds out here. We got a sort of a, a grassy area here where there's a lot of people sitting on blankets checking out the eclipse. We're told 5,000 people today, maybe more here at this event. NASA is here. You got uh, outlets like the, the Weather Channel is here checking this out. And there are more people back out on the lawn that way. So when I tell you there's a lot of people, I am not joking. And uh, everyone's been asking me about the clouds. Honestly, that's been the big topic of conversation. I know you guys have been reporting on it, but at the moment, we got blue skies. Kids are excited. Uh, there's dogs out here. I, I, everyone's just pumped, and it really, it looks so amazing. You can talk about it all day, but until you see it, this is when, this is go time. This is, this is the exciting part of it. So, uh, yeah, we're pumped, and we're, we're closing in. We're closing in on annularity, guys. Thank you so much, Justin. Yes, this is what we've been waiting for, the sun to peek out, and it's really starting to peek out in downtown San Antonio here at the station. I just went outside and got to see really quickly the moon moving in front of the sun. It's not too far off from this image we're seeing out here. Uh, I would love for my directors to tell me if this is the Albuquerque image or the one in San Antonio. That would be great. Uh, but until then, again, you can see that there's still some lingering shout, lingering uh, clouds clouds out there. See, I'm so used to talking about the rain, talking about showers. You can see those clouds out near Von Armory, and that is the Albuquerque shot there. Hopefully we can at some point get the San Antonio shot up when it comes up, but we are starting to see a lot of sun for a lot of people out there right around the time. We are T minus 20 minutes away from annularity when the moon will move in front of the sun and form that ring of fire. We are so excited about that. Let's take a wider view of the uh, clouds here. I might need to step off and uh, take a different view here. Okay, yes, I figured it out. I grabbed the wrong clicker, of course. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this AppCast. We are so excited to have you. Take a look out toward Yavaldi and Hondo. You can see that we're starting to see some breaks out there as well. Hopefully Mike and Yavaldi will be able to see some breaks. We know that Mia was just able to see some breaks out in Floresville. The ideal position to watch this eclipse right now is along I-10. So Leon Springs, Bernie, Comfort, Kerrville, all of those areas seeing great visibility right now. Out to the south, it's a little bit cloudier for areas like Beeville, Three Rivers, Goliad, Carn City, Pleasanton. I want to show you all some pictures on KSAC Connect. These are pictures that have been sent in to us, and I would love if you could send in your pictures on KSAC Connect. You can find KSAC Connect on our weather app there down at the bottom. It's a little camera icon. I love these shots. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these together. I'll step off the screen. Here we can see the pinhole projector working very nicely. If you don't have the glasses, you can use the pinhole projector. This looks very on brand for Halloween, doesn't it? Spooky. Well, this is actually green tinted because it's through a welding mask there. And is that the San Antonio shot? It is. This is live from the SCOBY Center. You can see the moon moving in front of the sun. It looks like a crescent. We love to see that. Let's see more pictures here. I love this poodle. This poodle is Paloma, and she is keeping her eyes safe and sound. And look at that, Floresville. 
Mia, probably in front of the big giant peanut out there. All right, this is from Seguin. You can see the clouds in the sky, able to see the sun through those clouds. So again, it's not the worst case scenario for us. We're finally starting to see the sun come out. This is at Westover Hills. We are loving to see this. And then this is out. Uh, this was taken an eclipse photo taken with the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra with eclipse lens. These are all our KSAT Connect pictures. This is everybody at the SCOBY uh, being excited about the sun finally coming up. We're going to keep this SCOBY shot out for you here. But right now we want to go to meteorologist Mike Osterhage. He's been trapped under cloud cover for a long time out there in Yavaldi. Mike, what you got? Uh, still trapped under cloud cover. There is that one little, little brighter spot there that we're hoping for. Like I said earlier, when it was about a third of the way covered, a lot of folks did get a nice view of it here in town. And then all of a sudden these clouds moved in now back just to the north. And you could probably uh, tell me better about this, Sarah, just because you're watching some of the satellite loops there. But we've got some clearing back up to the north. So I don't know. Yeah, and, and Sal's doing a great job trying to show this way up there. Hopefully that comes in our direction. Thank you, Sal. You're doing fantastic. Uh, yeah, if that could move over, maybe, maybe, maybe. But I think the odds of uh, seeing one of the uh, good eclipse here is going to be about as good as maybe winning the lottery or something like that today. But you know what? Folks are just having a great time. Let me go past this light real quickly here. And yeah. And I don't know if we're going to feel any sort of a uh, decrease in temperatures here just because we've got the cloud cover naturally, and it is just pleasantly cool out here. So that's on the plus side. Like I said, the party is just getting going out here. Yeah, not really. Uh, like I said, the, the, the guest of honor just didn't show up out here, Sarah. I love that you call it the guest of honor, Mike. But sometimes the sun is just too good for us. <laughs> so unfortunately, we do still have clouds out in Yavaldi, and I'll show you that image right there. You can see there's Mike, and he's still got plenty of cloud cover. But as I look a little closer to San Antonio again, we're finally starting to see some clearing. This image is from SCOBY, SAC. So you can see that the sun, I can also see that there's starting to be some clouds that are moving in front of the sun a little bit there. Uh, but the moon is moving in front of the sun. We'd love to see it. We're getting closer and closer to annularity, which will occur around 1150 this morning. So just within the next 15 minutes or so, you can see around San Antonio, we still got some clouds out in Von Army. We've still got some clouds out in Elmendorf and near Converse as well. And we're starting to see some clearing in Hondo. But these clouds are going to start to move in here and actually Actually, it's getting more and more difficult for us to see the visible image uh, on the satellite here. And that's because in order to see visible imagery, you need the sun. And notice how it's getting darker within these pink lines here as we're heading closer and closer to annularity. We'll be looking at things really starting to uh, dim outside, not necessarily darken like it would when a total solar eclipse happens when the moon is the same size or larger than the sun but it is going to dim a little bit like um, a little bit like you're in the shade. What I want to do now, and I'm throwing a curveball to our producers, I want to show the flamingo cam at the zoo because we're going to be interesting. To, it's going to be interesting to see if the flamingos start to act like it's a nighttime outside. If we can't get the flamingo cam, that's fine. I just know that it's a possibility for us, and I'd love to see how the animals start to react to it getting a little dim outside. Some of the uh, zoologists and people at the zoo told me that there they are. They're the flamingos. They're, they're none the wiser. But what you can see is you can start to see a little crescent shape of those shadows right above KSAT. You, right above the yep. KSAT logo, do you see yep. how they're crescent shaped, the sun is? And that's because the sun right now, in effect, is a crescent. It's not yep. a circle anymore. So a lot of the shadows are like that. So we're going to go to Adam, and then we'll go to Mia. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you've got to show us, Adam, on KSAT Connect. Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, it's super cool to get outside. So take your stream outside with you if you can, if you can safely look up at the sun at the moment. 1137, so we're still, well, over 10 minutes away, 12, 13 minutes away from the Ring of Fire. And we're going outside for that, so we'll even have a quiet feed and everybody can just take it in, the ring of fire. We don't want to ruin the moment for you, right? Sometimes you just need 
to take it in and see it for yourself. Anyway, um, Skywatcher Oscar, he's up in comfort. Uh, happy ed wedding anniversary, by the way. Uh, he's up in comfort and he's got a very good view of it. There's a picture of a picture. Uh, of course, the welding mask. Uh, this is the iPhone through the solar glasses. So you can try to put the solar glasses in front of your iPhone camera and then zoom in and, and then try to focus. It's very difficult to do it and to capture a good shot. This is out in Seguin, starting to see that. Uh, and a little bit of clouds over the eclipse. But hey, we're clearing out for the most part, and this is good to see people getting outside and getting into science in this beautiful event. Now we're going to go down back down to the Peanut Festival. Is that right? That's where we're going next. Mia, take it away. Everyone. Yes, we are still hanging out here at the Peanut Festival. The parade just ended, and if you want to pan, Kenny, you can see everybody is now flocking to the courthouse square. We are seeing plenty of breaks in the clouds. It's fantastic, and you can definitely see the moon moving in front of the sun. There's a break right now. Everybody's got their glasses. It is so cool to see everybody set up right here by the big peanut. And I have two very special guests with me. This is Kat and Romani. You guys both have grown up here in Floresville. Y'all were in the parade today, right? Yes, what, who, yeah. who were y'all in the parade with? We were with the Mighty Tiger Band. The band? What instruments do y'all play? I play the trumpet. I play the clarinet. Incredible. Have you guys ever seen an eclipse before? I have not. I actually haven't. And so you got your glasses? Where'd you get your glasses? I got my glasses. I just found them. There you go. What about you? I actually got mine from the ticket booth. From the ticket booth. Yep. They've been handing out glasses with uh, food ticket purchases today. A lot of people have gotten those. You'll want to check out and see if we can see it right now. I think we've got a little break in the cloud. Okay. So we put our glasses on before we look up. Oh, yeah. You can see it. There it is again. So we're less than 20 minutes away from the peak of the annularity here. We were talking about oh, here comes a few more clouds. But see, that's the definition of passing clouds. We see a couple and then they go away and then we can see the sun again. So look down and then we can take our glasses off. Yes, so y'all yes. your glasses. Don't look at the sun without your glasses. That is very important. Um, so y'all have obviously grown up coming to the peanut festival. Yes. How cool is it to have an event like this happen while we're all outside doing this kind of thing? It's awesome. It makes it it's even like, more fun. Yeah, it's so fun. Like you can do so many things here. You can go shopping, you can eat, you can watch. You can do it. It's the best. Rides. It's the best of all worlds, right? Yep. So we can take one more pan around. Everybody is out here enjoying the peanut festival. We've got our glasses ready. Plenty of peaks of sun in the cloud cover. So yes, we are having a great time. The weather is beautiful. We could not have asked for better weather. The winds have died down. Dry air. It feels comfortable, and everybody is going nuts out here in Floresville. That is for sure. We'll send things back to you guys. We'll check back in with y'all in just a little bit. Thank you so much, Mia. Okay, so what I wanted to do is, I want, again, skies are starting to clear around San Antonio. There's still plenty of places where it's cloudy, especially out west near Uvalde and Hondo. But remember how I said that we use the satellite imagery with the power of the sun? That's how we see it. Well, notice, again, I went back two hours so that you can see how bright it was and now how dark it's getting. And the reason why it's getting dark is because of this image right here. It's because the moon is moving in front of the sun. It is getting dimmer outside, more like it is at dusk rather than uh, during the peak of the day. I want to quickly go to our forecast for the day, and you can see that temperatures, even though they're in the 70s right now, we're actually going to drop into the upper 60s. Now, that shot that you're seeing right now is at the SCOBY. Hopefully, we can get it moved a little bit so that we can get the sun centered toward the image there. But out at the SCOBY, we have meteorologist Justin Horn. He is having a great time. I've seen some awesome shirts out at the SCOBY. I've seen a lot of people excited, cheering after the sun came out. Tell us what's going on, Justin. Sorry to bug y'all. We're, we're live on, uh, on KSET. Do you mind if we interview you real quick? Let's so we're see. kind of we're awesome. amongst the folks here watching the eclipse. We're getting so close, and it's getting a little dimmer outside. We can we can see that. What do you guys think so far? Uh, it's amazing. I've never seen a solar eclipse before. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's super cool. Really cool, right? Yeah. yeah. And we're getting blue sky, which is amazing. Uh, so we're excited about that. A lot of people were able to see it. We got music on, so it's kind of like a party atmosphere. Let's go over here. What do you think about the eclipse so far? 
I am nervous, excited. Uh, I don't know what else I can say, but I'm shaking in a good way. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Did you come here for the eclipse? I've not been here forever, but okay. you know, uh, this is uh, something I'm waiting for April now. Yeah. It's yeah. gonna be really exciting. It's awesome. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 But this is great so far. Yes, yes, enjoy, enjoy. And you can see the crowd, guys. We've got a huge crowd out here. And some metal music on, which, you know, matches the matches the situation. But it is getting a little dimmer. We, we can notice that. And uh, it's just a lot of excitement out here. I mentioned earlier, 5,000 people. Seems like we've got that many people out here. And uh, just a lot of excited folks, which I'm excited too. And I'm so glad that we're able to get these clouds out of the way. I see more blue sky in the distance. So I think this is going to work out perfectly. Just as we forecasted, right, guys? Just didn't. Thank you so much there, Justin. It's great to see that things are working out perfectly like that, like you just said. And again, we've got a few pictures here of the clouds uh, kind of obstructing the view, but now the sun is out and it's really awesome to be seeing that ring of fire. We're gonna try to reframe this image here of what you're seeing uh, out at the SCOBY where you can kind of see the sun up in the corner there. We're gonna reframe that for you. We've got, we can't move it too much because you know it'll mess up the way the camera looks. Looks. But I'm showing you right now some pictures of uh, the eclipse. This one is from Chris on our KSAT Connect. Mike finally has said that he has seen some sun. Let's check a look, take a look at that. Mike, what, that shot looks amazing, okay. man. Yeah, and it's almost, yeah, it's going behind the clouds a little bit, but we've been watching it. We've been seeing it for about the past minute. Of course, it's starting behind clouds right as I speak, but at least the clouds are thinning out a little bit, and you can see that barely the ring, and it almost looks like it is at the peak right now, and I can't tell. I don't think we're seeing light on the, the top side of it right not yet. yet but not yet, Mike, boy, but it looks great. Boy. Wow. Wow, okay, there, watch it grow. Watch that little smile grow. Okay, oh, we are looking awesome. out here, I'll tell Let's you that. Let's just stay with that shot for a while, because that is amazing, Mike, out in Yavaldi. You know, you're about probably yeah. five minutes away from that full annularity. It kind of reminds me of a Cheshire cat's grin. <laughs> I love it so much. It, it does, and you know what? Uh, the clouds are definitely working in our favor because there is more more holes in the clouds approaching the sun right there so i think we're going to be able to see just about the whole thing there's a lot of blue skies just above that picture obviously it's kind of playing a little hide and seek with the clouds right now but there are a lot more holes that are going to be moving in over top of it so at least we have been seeing it like you said it is that that cheshire cat smile up there and yeah here it's coming back again very faintly that's great and just about at, just about at at the peak right there awesome that is so great look at that shot in your valley adam that mike has got that's amazing you know honestly when we have a little cloud cover outside the pinhole projectors are great and there we've got that shot at the scoby so we are nearing annularity we're about four minutes away four and a half minutes away from annularity you can see that temperatures generally are in the upper 60s and low 70s they're going to drop by a couple of degrees here as we near that annularity let's just bring up full screen that shot at the scoby awesome also want to give a round of applause to our folks in production for <laughs> helping us fly by the seat of our pants here as we're uh, just keeping an eye on things. It looks like things are going to be great for us outside. And this is one of those things where we want everyone to experience this. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to see this annular eclipse coming up in uh, in April 8th. We are going to have a total solar eclipse. That's 175 days away and Oh my goodness, my husband just sent me some really cool images of the crescents yes. on the, on. So if you look at the shadows outside, you'll notice that they're crescent shaped because the sun is a crescent. Uh, so again, this is a really once in a lifetime event. The next one is April 8th, less than six months away. The last time we had a total solar eclipse in San Antonio 
was in the 1300s. Hard to believe, isn't it? Hard to believe. And I don't know if it's ever been documented that we've seen an annular followed by a solar this quickly. No, no, not, not around here. Not around no, that's here. why we say once in a lifetime, and especially April will be once in a lifetime where you don't have to travel for it. It's right, I mean, you just have to head outside of San Antonio a little bit. Uh, but there's a lot of excitement out there. I was with the girls outside. Yeah. And they're, they're really getting into it. So even, you know, kids or people who thought, ah, oh, what's the big deal? Once it starts happening and they see it, it does generate excitement. Absolutely. Now, meteorologist Mike Osterhage is asking for us to take his shot. There. Oh, that's a beautiful image there. Look at that. Just do two double boxes if you and can. One with the one in Yavaldi and one with the one here in San Antonio. That would and be great. You know, what's interesting is Sal, who is out here with me, Sal, Sal is our, our photog, and we were noticing it's like seven o'clock in the morning just before the sun is coming up. Uh, you know, yep. it, it is awesome. definitely not as bright out here right now. And we've got a big break in the clouds sitting right on top of that. And as you can see, the two the two sides of that big smile there are almost okay. coming together right yeah. at the top. Absolutely. Okay, I have an idea. So we are approaching annularity. We want everybody to see this, including our folks in production out in the booth there. So, if you guys can leave up my mic, that would be great. I'll turn it on and off as I need to. And let's leave the Yavaldi shot and the San Antonio shot up, and let's all go outside to experience this together. Yes, countdown is two and a half. Amazing. This is amazing. You guys are hearing my voice right now. I'm out in the KSAT garden. It's like it is, honestly, it's like we're at dusk. Take a look at this. This is so cool. All right, Adam's kids here are with me. What do you guys think of this? I really cool. It's, it's so really cool. cool. It's so cool. Hey, Sarah Schluter, what do you think is the coolest part so far? I don't know. I'm just waiting for the total eclipse. Oh, I see, because that's by your birthday, too, the total eclipse. Hey guys, guess what? It feels a little cooler outside too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. This is so neat. Okay, look at the back of Adam's shirt. Y'all can't see this on the camera, but you can see. Oh wow, this is amazing. What were you saying, Robert? The lights came on. The lights came on. The automatic oh, lights. that's so cool. So our automatic so cool. lights that come out at night have just turned on as we're starting to look. We are approaching complete annularity here at the KSAT studio. You can see the shot of San Antonio on the right of your screen, the shot of Givaldi on the left of your screen. I just feel so grateful to experience this once in a lifetime opportunity with everyone. We're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my mic for a little bit. Five seconds. Two, three, four, five. Six, They're counting to annularity. Nine, 10. 35 seconds. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, You're cutting a little 19, too fast. <laughs> Let's go. 21, 22. There you go. A little too fast. <laughs> you can start to see it. You see? You almost have a ring of fire. 29, 30, 31, 32. All right, girls, no more cutting. We're good. All right, turning off my mic to just enjoy this with everyone. Alrighty, everyone, we have annularity. You can see the ring of fire. We have ring of fire, we have ring of fire. What? 
You can hear Adam's kids so excited. They're using their pinhole projectors right now. Ooh, can I use one of your pinhole projectors? Yeah. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. Adam, I don't know. I'm a little emotional. Me too. So I know. It's oh, so it's touching. It's very touching. It's so shady out here now. Yeah, it feels like the like early morning sunrise, doesn't it? It's shady. Did, does it feel um, any different out here to you girls? Yeah. Feels cooler? Oh, yeah. yeah. They're so cool. Isn't that cool? Oh my goodness. Now remember, if you think this is cool and interesting, just wait until April 8th. It's going to be even better because it's going to turn daylight to darkness. Yeah. We're looking at 10% of the sun still shining on us, whereas April 8th, we won't have any. It'll turn daylight to darkness and it's going to be completely different. It will It'll be it's, even better. It's important to note too that only parts of San Antonio are going to be in the path of totality. Yeah, only and, Northwest San Antonio, and but still. You'll have to travel a little bit to be in the perfect center line for that, but it's still in our area. And um, this is the only perfect circle in the world. It's going to be perfect on my birthday. No. Oh. And in April, you'll be able to take off your glasses for a short period of time to look at the eclipse. Not now. No, you need to have now. your glasses now. I'm just saying in April, it's going to be different, but enjoy this ring of fire, y'all. Enjoy it. This is the only perfect circle that I have ever seen. It's so perfect. Ah. is this. On the top left you're seeing the shot in Yavaldi, on the right you're seeing the shot in San Antonio, and then we've got Floresville, the crowd reaction. Everybody just enjoying the annular I eclipse. don't know if they're going to take me. Absolutely beautiful to see that. Again, we're just enjoying this.
right, our mics are back on. And as you can see, we're starting to get out of the ring of fire. Uh, as, but this partial eclipse will last until 1.33 this afternoon. And it's slowly starting to get brighter outside. I mean, you can even feel the difference how it got cooler. And now oh. that the ring of fire is done, you feel it slowly getting warmer. All it takes is those small percentages of sunlight to make that difference. It makes me so excited for what we're going to feel during the total eclipse. Yes. Adam. I mean, what's so interesting is we talked about earlier the automatic lights that turn on at night, you know, because they have solenoids in them that measure, you know, how much daylight and brightness is. They all turned on out here in the KSAT garden so and they're all cool. still on but soon as this eclipse now moves in the opposite direction and moves away from the ring of fire and we go back to normal sunlight these are going to all start to turn off again and it's going to be like a regular just like a regular day and regular saturday absolutely now we would love to hear what your experience has been like yes what what do you feel like has been the most unusual thing to you, the thing you were not expecting, but the thing that happened, please reach out to us. You can email us at weather at ksat.com. You can find us anywhere on our social media pages. We would love for you to post your KSAT Connect pictures. You can find KSAT Connect at the bottom of this app, of our weather app. It's the camera icon. Um, I was getting emotional looking at this because you think about it, how amazing is it that we as humans get to observe something like this? The moon and the sun are perfectly positioned and about the same size as apparent size in the sky, just so that we can have the opportunity to observe something like this. As so a scientist, as somebody who loves space, and all things weather, this is truly amazing to hey, me. So I've got some middle schoolers and an elementary schooler with here with me. Tell me your reactions as you saw the ring of fire. It was so cool. What yeah, was I it? Thought it, was it was pretty. so cool. I thought it was pretty. Pretty? It, it was a perfect circle. How did it, uh, what did you expect of it and how did it compare? Oh, um, I didn't really expect anything. I kind of, well, I kind of knew what it would look like. So I kind of like already knew. So I was expecting it. But was there see, anything surprising? No, but like, I was just like, I just liked it. Cool. You got to see it with your own eyes, not through a camera, yeah. not through past photos, not through past videos, with your own two eyes. Amazing. And again, this partial eclipse will last until 1.33. So we've still got some time to enjoy this beautiful weather and these beautiful conditions. And our feed will be coming to an end soon, so we thank you all for joining us. As we'll keep the uh, pictures of the eclipse going. Yeah. But thank you guys so much for joining us. We're gonna sign off here. Oh, enjoy y'all. Thank you.